Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the podcast and today I'm going to go over a review of WWE's Bash in Berlin. Starting off the evening we go to our first match of the night is for the WWE Championship. It is Kevin Owens versus Cody Rhodes. Number one man the crowd was awesome. You guys were great in Berlin. The crowd was outstanding. The match itself man it was a great match. In my honest opinion probably match of the night. Back and forth matchup between Owens and Rhodes with Owens keeping the pace of the match. Owens then hits a senton off the apron, taking out Rhodes. Rhodes then gets up, applies a figure four leg lock on Owens in the middle of the ring, but Owens quickly breaks the hold. Owens then hits a, a splash to the outside off the apron on Rhodes. Rhodes then gets up, hits a power slam on Owens in the middle of the ring. Rhodes then hits a disaster kick on Owens for a near fall. Rhodes then hits a Cody Cutter for a near fall as well. Owens and Rhodes then both exchange in the middle of the ring with Owens going for a stunner, but Rhodes counters it with a crossroads on Owens for a near fall. Owens then gets up, hits an avalanche brain buster on Rhodes for a near fall. The crowd goes absolutely crazy after that. Rhodes then legs looks to be injured. He was going for a springboard move, but his leg looks to be injured. Owens then hits a stunner on Rhodes for a near fall. Rhodes then gets up, hits a two hits two crossroads on Owens. Owens then hits another stunner for a near fall on Rhodes, but Owens hits a crossroads. Or Cody hits a crossroads, pins for the three. And your winner of the match is Cody Rhodes. After the match, Kevin and Cody both embrace in the middle of the ring. Looks like their friendship for now is still intact. A couple things I want to say about this matchup, man. Number one, like I said, this match to me was the match of the night. Obviously, Gunther and Orton was a big deal. But match quality-wise, this was a great, great match, man. Owens and Rhodes, in my honest opinion, they stole the show in Bash of Berlin. I was very surprised, honestly, that... WWE actually put this match on first to be honest with you. I thought we were going to get Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair versus Isla Dawn and Alba Fire. I thought that might have been the first match, but I was very surprised they put this match on first. I guess they didn't want to take too much spotlight away from Gunther and Randy Orton's matchup. But this match was great. This was a great way to open up Bash of Berlin. It was a great matchup between Rhodes and Owens. And obviously it looks like, you know, the biggest storyline coming out of that matchup is is the friendship still going to be intact, if you will, between Owens and Rhodes moving forward? And it looks like Rhodes already has another challenger in line with so, uh, Solo Sokoa issuing, uh, issuing a uh, challenge to Rhodes uh, for the WWE title. So it looks like Rhodes is going to have his hands full once again dealing with the bloodline and Solo Sokoa. But this match alone between Owens and Rhodes, fantastic matchup, fantastic way to open up Bash at Berlin. I was very happy about this matchup, and it was a solid match from top to bottom, hats off to Rhodes for getting the win in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It's for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. It is Isla Dawn teaming up with Alba Fire versus Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. I thought it was a good match, man. It was a solid match, back and forth matchup between both teams with Isla Dawn and Alba Fire keeping the pace of the match. Jade then hits a fall away slam and then Jade and Belair ultimately hit the finish. Pins for the three and your winners of the match and new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions are Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. Hats off to Cargill and Belair for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. Very high anticipated matchup and a marquee matchup, if you will, for Bash of Berlin. This is a good rivalry between McIntyre and Punk. It's McIntyre versus Punk in a strap match. Um, I thought it was a great match, man. I told a hell of a story. Back and forth matchup between McIntyre and Punk with McIntyre keeping the pace of the match. Punk quickly hits a GTS on McIntyre. McIntyre and Punk, though, both exchange in the middle of the ring. Punk then hits a Claymore kick on McIntyre. McIntyre then goes to hit the turnbuckle, but Punk sends McIntyre into the chair that was posted up in the turnbuckle. McIntyre then throws Punk through a table to the outside. Punk then gets up, applies a sharpshooter on McIntyre. In the middle of the ring, but the hold is broken. McIntyre then brings out the bracelet that Punk has desperately wanted back. McIntyre then hits a Claymore kick, but Punk Punk gets up, hits a GTS on Drew McIntyre, as well as another GTS. Punk then hits two more GTSs on McIntyre, and then Punk grabs the bracelet. Punk then hits all of the ring post, and your winner of the match is CM Punk. Hats off to CM Punk for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It's a mixed tag team matchup. It is Rhea Ripley teaming up with Damian Priest versus Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. I thought this was a great match, man. It was a back and forth matchup between both teams with Rhea and Priest keeping the pace of the match. Rhea then hits a fallaway slam. Liv then hits a code breaker on Rhea Ripley. 
Rhea and Priest then hit a razor's edge on Dominic and Liv Morgan in the middle of the ring. Judgment Day ended up showing up. Finn Balor then attacks Damian Priest. Dominic then hits a frog splash off the top rope for a near fall. But Rhea Ripley ultimately hits a riptide on Liv Morgan. Pins for the three. And your winners of the match are Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest. Hats off to Ripley and Priest for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is the main event of Bash in Berlin. It is Randy Orton versus Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship. I thought this was a great match, man. Uh, back and forth matchup between uh, Orton and Gunther, but Orton and Gunther are both exchanging in the middle of the ring. Orton then was keeping the pace of the match. Orton hits a fallaway slam on Gunther. Orton then hits a power slam on Gunther in the middle of the ring. Orton then hit hits a back suplex on Gunther through a table, through the announce table. Gunther then applies a sleeper hold. Referee then tries to get see if Orton was okay. He raises a hand. Orton drops the hand. Referee sounds for the bell, and your winner of the match and still World Heavyweight Champion is Gunther. Hats off to Gunther for getting the win in this matchup. A couple of things I want to talk about when it pertains to Bash of Berlin, man, before I get out of here. Number one, it was a solid event. I, I think this is something that WWE really needs to hone in on. And what I mean by that is, is they need to... The overseas fans, and, and um, from Germany to when they were in France for Backlash to Puerto Rico, I believe, for Backlash as well, not too long ago when Bad Bunny was a part of that event. You know, the fans overseas, man, they really do hype up the, the events. The, the crowd in Germany in Berlin was, was outstanding. I mean, from the Cody Rhodes match to the match with Gunther and Orton, it was so much, it was so crazy that Orton was even playing along with the fans. The fans were doing the wave, Orton was trying to be a part of the wave. It was just outstanding, man. I, I think the fans overseas, you know, in, in Berlin or France or wherever have you, man, the, the fans over there are incredible. And, and they really make the show. They really do. Not saying that Berlin, the match card was bad. I'm not saying that. But the van, the fans in Berlin were a vital part of what happened at Bachelor Berlin. It, it was a great event. There was a lively crowd. The crowd was outstanding, man. For y'all in Berlin, man, those fans that were there, my hat's off to you guys, man. Those, you guys are absolutely awesome. Uh, but the card itself, man, like I said, it was a solid card. I was kind of surprised they started off with Rhodes and Owens. Um, I can understand why they did that in the aspect of not taking the heat away from Gunther and Randy Orton, even though Gunther and Randy Orton was already a big deal. Um, but with that being said, I still believe the match of the night, in my honest opinion, was Cody Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens. I, I think that was a solid match from top to bottom. Those guys both brought the house down. Um, and it, to be honest with you, they, they did kind of steal a little spotlight, I believe, between Gunther and Randy Orton. Just a tiny little bit, man. It was a solid match. And to be honest with you, Cody Rhodes, and I, I mentioned this multiple times, and I'm not trying to bring AEW into the fold here, but I, I will say this. You know, seeing what Cody Rhodes is doing in WWE compared to what he did in AEW, man, it's vastly different. It is night and day. And, you know, for Triple H and WWE to pretty much put the jetpack on the back of Cody Rhodes and let him ride to the moon, man, he's done a fantastic job not only being a symbol for the company, but a workhorse, man, and somebody that the company can obviously build around, you know, Cody Rhodes. And Cody Rhodes can really build up this company, and he's done a hell of a job by doing so. Cody Rhodes, I'm not going to sit here and say that Cody Rhodes is another John Cena. I'm not going to say that. I think John Cena is in, in a whole different category than Cody Rhodes. But what I will say is this, the way that Cody Rhodes carries himself as a human being, as a world champion, you know, is the sky's the limit for him in WWE. I, I still think there's a lot of things still for Cody Rhodes to do in WWE. I, I really do. And I'm not saying Cody Rhodes is going anywhere anytime soon, but there's a lot for Cody to do. And Cody is, you know, not only just an ambassador for WWE, but an ambassador for pro wrestling. And he's had a hell of a career from his time on the Indies, time in New Japan, obviously his time in AEW and time now that he has with WWE. He's done a hell of a job in his in-ring career. And if I was, if anybody had a wrestling company that had the availability to have Cody Rhodes and build around Cody Rhodes, you're going to do it. You're, you're going to build that company around that guy. That guy is a, a trailblazer, man. And that guy is an absolute workhorse. And as well as Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, I truly believe Kevin Owens does not get enough credit where credit's due. Kevin Owens has been through the trenches, man. And Kevin Owens, he's one of those guys that, you know, every time he steps in that ring, He's going in there to beat the hell out of you. And I have a lot of respect for Owens and what he's done in his career. I know some people have even hinted that, that Owens might go over to AEW. He hasn't re-signed his contract yet. I'd be very surprised if Owens was even entertaining the idea of going over to AEW. 
I think his bread is buttered in WWE. He has a fantastic career in WWE, future Hall of Famer. I, I'll be very surprised if Owens jumps ship and goes to AEW. I'll be very surprised if that happens. Um, but with that being said, the match alone between Rhodes and Owens was fantastic, man. To me, it, it was the match of the night, in my honest opinion. Not trying to disrespect anybody that had matches on that card. They were all great. But just me as a fan alone, I was a humongous fan of the Owens and Rhodes match especially to kick off Bash of Berlin. It was a fantastic way to do that, and it was a great match in itself. And hats off to Cody Rhodes for getting the win in that match. Um, a couple other things out of Bash of Berlin, too, honestly, was, like I said, was the fans. And go through Randy Orton, uh, that was a huge match. It had a lot of implications in that matchup. I mean, if Orton would have beat Gunther in that matchup, it would have been history in the making. Um, obviously, Orton's trying to go after, you know, Cena and Ric Flair's record for most wins as WWE champion or most title wins, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, we all know that Orton wasn't successful in beating Gunther. I, to me, I think Gunther is going to have a very long title reign, to be honest with you. I, I, maybe not as long as what he had with the Intercontinental Champion, but I think he's going to have a decent run with this World Heavyweight Champion. And he's another guy that, again, you can build a company around for sure. And I mentioned this a couple weeks back that – and some people were actually, like, you know, disappointed that I said it, but I, I wasn't saying it in the aspect that, oh, you know – Gunther is Bruno San Martino. I'm not saying that. Bruno San Martino is in a whole league of his own. He's a fantastic wrestler, Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame career. But the way that, that Gunther carries himself as a wrestler, you know, he has that that old school vibe to him, man. And then as a fan for me, it just I'm a big fan. I, I think the old school vibe is great. I, I think he walks in like a Bruno San Martino or a Ric Flair-ish with the suits and, you know, him just being a powerhouse, man. And I'm not trying to, you know, be funny when I say this, but he, he comes in as that that pissed off, like, Ivan Drago of pro wrestling. You know what I mean? Where, like, if you, everybody I've, has watched the Rocky movies, we've all seen Rocky. But you if you remember seeing what Rocky IV, Drago came in as this, this lethal badass, man. And we all saw what he did to, you know, Apollo Creed, and he just decimated Apollo Creed, he destroyed him. And then you see Rocky come in, and obviously we all saw what happened with Rocky trying, you know, pretty much beating Ivan Drago. But that's the vibe I got, even when Gunther was Walter, when he came into WWE. He just was this powerhouse, man. This guy, this just, you know, this villain. And that's really, Gunther's a great heel. I mean, without without a shadow of a doubt. To me, he's just, he don't have to say anything. He's just a heel. He gives off that, that presence of being a heel. And I think to me... He is the Ivan Drago, if you will, of professional wrestling. You know, not trying to disrespect Rocky IV or any Rocky fans. I'm a Rocky fan myself. But I'm just saying he gives off that vibe, man. And I think Gunther can continue to keep doing that with the ring general and everything else and his gimmick and what he's brought to the table. I mean, Gunther can wrestle his ass off. I mean, if you look at what he's done in the ring and the match he had with, Ivan, uh, with Dragunov, I mean, in NXT, that match was incredible. And, I mean, if you look at the stature of a guy like Gunther, and the stature of a guy like Dragunov. And both these guys are beating the hell out of one another in that matchup. I don't know if you guys can go back and watch it for like NXT, but I think it was a takeover. And those guys tore the house down for NXT when they had that matchup between uh, Walter and, uh, and Dragunov. It was great. Uh, it was a fantastic matchup. And Walter has those devastating chops. And Dragunov is just one of those guys, again, man, that just he's in there to kick your ass. And... He's a smaller guy, especially compared to a guy like Walter or Gunther. But, I mean, he, every time he gets in that ring, man, he brings it. And that's what I'm trying to say is, is that's the vibe that I'm getting from, from Gunther, man. This Ivan Drago heel badass, the ring general. And, you know, obviously he has ties to love with Kaiser. You know, Imperium was awesome. Obviously they're kind of separated now with, you know, Kaiser doing his own thing a little bit. And obviously Gunther doing his own thing. And Giovanni is doing his own thing. He's supposed to make his debut here relatively soon for SmackDown. So Imperium's not really as whole as it once was. But again, man, Gunther, he's just a powerhouse, man. I'm not sitting here saying he's a Bruno San Martino. He just gives off vibes and how he carries himself as a champion like Bruno did or how Flair did. And Flair, obviously Flair was very flashy where Gunther is not. But, you know, he just gives off that your 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 prototypical wrestler. And that, to me, that's what Gunther is, man. He is that old school kind of wrestler. He's coming in there to kick your ass. He's not going to sit here and run his mouth and do all that stuff. When the, when the time comes, the bell rings, he's in there to do his job and make sure that he walks out as World Heavyweight Champion. And I have the utmost respect for Gunther 
But speaking of that matchup, you look at someone like Randy Orton, man, and Randy Orton's had a hell of a career. Hell of a career. His time from Evolution, when he first got on the scene with WWE. Obviously, he's had a lot of ups and downs in WWE, but he's had some fantastic matches in his career, man. And he looks better than he does. He looks better now than he did before, man. I mean, Orton... It, Orton looks great. I mean, Orton looks like he he can wrestle for another 20 years. And, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if he does. I know he just signed a contract extension, I think another five years with WWE, which will get him, I think, to 2028, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, or something like that, which is great. I mean, Orton, Orton's a household name, man. Orton's a main eventer. And uh, I look forward to what's going to happen next with Orton. I, honestly, if I had to be... A betting man, I, I do believe that Cody Rose does want to kind of have some kind of storyline here between Randy Orton. And whether we get that at Bad Blood or something like that, I, I think that matchup between Rhodes and Orton can possibly happen. I don't know how, but if it does happen, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Obviously, there's a lot of ties there between Orton and Rhodes from when Rhodes was in WWE and Orton had the stable with Legacy with, you know, obviously Rhodes, Orton, and Teddy DiBiase Jr. So, I mean, obviously there is a connection there and a storyline there between Orton and Rhodes that took place a long time ago. Even Dusty was a part of that storyline a little bit with Legacy and Orton and all, and all that stuff. So there's a lot of ties there between Orton and Rhodes, which I would not mind seeing, you know, obviously Orton being a heel and having a matchup against Rhodes. I think it, it would make a hell of a story and a, a hell of a match. Um, but there's a lot of unanswered questions, too. You know, what's going to be next for Kevin Owens? What's going to be next for Cody Rhodes? Who's next for, you know, for Gunther? And who's next for Randy Orton? And I think that's the biggest question coming out of Bash of Berlin. But all in all, man, it was a solid event. It was a solid event. And like I said, I hopefully hopefully this is something that WWE continues to do with having their PLEs overseas. I know that there's a lot of speculation and rumors about WWE possibly having a WrestleMania in London. I'm all for it. I'm absolutely all for it because I'm telling you right now, when they go overseas, whether it's Puerto Rico, France, Germany, wherever country they decide to go, man, the fans always show up and show out. And it makes the events a spectacle, man. It, it makes the event a lot more lively than what it is. And the fans are a humongous part of it, man. Like I said earlier, the fans that were in Berlin for Bash in Berlin, man, my hats go off to you. You guys made the event absolutely incredible. You look at the main event between Orton and Gunther and you see Randy Orton in the middle of the ring doing the wave with the entire fans in the arena in Berlin, man. It was absolutely awesome. It was an incredible experience to see. And it just makes it for a better event. And hopefully WWE follows suit with this and continue to go overseas to do PLEs. I think it'll be absolutely great. You know, in my honest opinion, I I genuinely speaking of a little bit of AEW and WWE, the difference here is is when you see AEW go over to Wembley, I don't it's it's not the same I'm not getting the same vibe of what I'm getting when WWE goes over to Berlin or France. I mean the France crowd I believe for Backlash was incredible. I mean, it was absolutely awesome. And then even the fans that just happened, you know, were in Berlin. The fans were incredible. We're, you're not getting the same thing from AEW. You're just not. And hopefully, like I said, WWE continues to have events or PLEs overseas because it benefits all parties involved. It, it benefits WWE. It benefits the fans. It benefits, you know, people watching the event and people being there because the crowd is hyped up. The crowd, like I said, man, they show up and show out. And it just makes the event a hell of a lot better before you even see it, man. I mean, you might see like vignettes and stuff like that, a video package leading up to Bash of Berlin, but when they're live at the event, the fans, you know, they're, they're killing it, man. They're absolutely doing incredible stuff, and it makes the event even more hyped up than what it already is with the fans just going absolutely crazy. And it's, it's absolutely awesome. It's absolutely enjoyable to see, and like I said, hopefully WWE continue to do that with these PLEs, but like I said, man, Bash of Berlin, it was a great event. You know, the time slot... I wasn't hating the time slot, 1 p.m. Eastern. I know a lot of people like it later. And a lot of people have a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, it's Saturday. The weekends are nice. Obviously, it's Labor Day weekend, which, again, I hope you guys are enjoying your Labor Day weekend. I know I am, and my family is. So hopefully you guys are having a good time and having to cook out and stuff like that and hanging out outside. It's The weather is awesome outside, by the way. So um, hopefully you guys are enjoying your Labor Day weekend. But, you know, I, I didn't mind the time slot. I know there's obviously some fans of college football, too, that were like, oh, man, you know, I want to watch Bash of Berlin, but then they got the college football season get ready to start. So, And I'm on the same page with y'all, man. I love college football, too, and I know some of you guys might like college football, too. So that time slot-wise might have messed up some things if you wanted to watch college football or Bash of Berlin or whatever. So that I understand. But all in all, man, it was a great event. It, it was a great event, and, you know, it was 
you know, hopefully WWE continues to go overseas and, and have these PLEs, man, because it benefits a lot of people. It benefits the crowd. It benefits the people watching. It benefits WWE immensely with having these events overseas and having these great PLEs over there, man. It's absolutely awesome. And, uh, again, Bash of Berlin was a home run, in my honest opinion, man, from top to bottom, from Cody Rhodes to Kevin Owens to the main event being Gunther and Randy Orton. Solid pay-per-view from top to bottom. But with that being said, this is my review of Bash in Berlin. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful and remember, stay classic. Peace.